talk about linens and things, uh, and really mostly the linens. And, and the fact that we uh, call them linens is important. It's not just linens as in, you know, white goods, uh, as in a generic term. Traditionally, they are made out of linen. Well, for one thing, in antiquity, in the Mediterranean basin, of course, the, uh, the white fabric, uh, you know, fiber, uh, natural fiber, was linen. Uh, cotton was not available um, in any significant way at that point. Uh, but more to the point, linen was used well, for everything, of course, but also to wrap the body. Uh, burial shrouds, traditionally made out of linen. And, and, and as were uh, tablecloths and napkins and all of those things. <laughs> And in the mass, there is a juxtaposition of the meal, the common supper, the communal meal on the one hand, and the sacrifice and death. They come together. They come together in the way that, and, and, and they come together in a way that is illustrated, at least in part, in the very linens that we use. So let's just talk briefly. I just want to introduce the linens. Um, at the very beginning, we have a bare altar. Traditionally, altars are made with um, stone of some sort. A lot of stones, especially really fancy marbles and sort of things like that, have a lot of metallic content in them. They have oxides and so on. Uh, and those, uh, those metallic components can actually stain linens in a way that is permanent. They really dye the linen. To protect that traditionally, um, uh, churches have used what we call a cera cloth. A cera means uh, uh, wax in, in, in Latin. Um, and I, I was using this piece of cardboard to represent that. We don't use the cera cloth here because uh, our, linen, our altar is made out of wood. And also, pretty much nobody uses waxed cloths anymore anyway. Uh, it's just simply a linen cloth that's been dipped in wax, like wax paper. Uh, the problem with it is, is that you know, churches get really hot in the summertime, uh, and the wax and so on can, can all get messy. So we use plastic. Now, for us, since our, our altar will not stain, and we usually have a piece of canvas or something underneath it anyway, we use cera cloth on the top of the altar um, to uh, protect the fair linen uh, from the vessels. And it may not be best practice, but um, I know that our altar guild is thankful that we do use these. So this is our cera cloth. Um, it is made out of one of those uh, flexible cutting boards or craft boards. Uh, that I picked up at a supermarket, actually, and uh, cut down the size. That's probably the least uh, important of all of these things. Uh, and the rest of the claws then can come together uh, to form the, the basic set uh, of communion. We will assume that we have a fair linen. That's the tablecloth that goes over the whole thing. It is also at once a tablecloth and a burial shroud. Uh, on top of that, we have the equivalent, really, the ecclesiastical equivalent of a placemat to protect the tablecloth. And here, this would go on top of our cera cloth. Okay. So what we do, what I do as the priest, or if we have a deacon or subdeacon, is we lay that down just about like that, assuming I'm facing you and this is the altar, right? On top of that, then we build our communion set. So we would take a cup and put that there. We take this, this is, think of this, this is, we call this a purificator, and that's another Latinism. It is also traditionally made out of 100% linen. And we do have a couple that are actually linen. This one is not. This is a, a cotton poly blend of some sort, I think. Uh, and we would place that there, right? And we would place the the um, patent on top of it. It's chalice. This is a patent. Patent is a Latinism. It simply means plate. Okay. Uh, and then what we would typically do is we would put 
the priest's host on that plate. Uh, with that set up, then, uh, actually, I didn't do this quite right. What I want to do is not have having opened that yet. Let's see. So we're filming all of my mistakes, right? <laughs> As we go along. Okay. This piece here, we go moving on. This is called a paw. Uh, and we, it's not the only paw that we use, uh, but it is um, a stiff board. It's used to cover the chalice. And you'll notice that, um, that Eric was taking the paw uh, off of the uh, chalice and putting it back on at various times. It's a little bit of a stylish way to do it. Tell you the truth, the real reason we use the paw is to keep uh, fruit flies and other bugs and dust and so on out of the wine. You think, well, why would we need that nowadays? Believe me, we do. Um, the port that wine that we use is a very sweet smelling wine. Uh, uh, it is an aromatic wine. Uh, and in churches that, you know, don't have air conditioning and really good screens, uh, we can get fruit flies in the wine. And I've experienced this many times. So that's what the Paul is really for. It's just a practical item. A Paul simply in this case means cover. Although again, there is this connotation to the sacrifice of the cross and the burial of the body. So Paul goes on top like that. Uh, this is an option. This is also a paw, a cover for the Paul, which I, I'm not going to use now. And then what we would do is if we were setting this up for um, the mass, we would have two ways to finish this off. We could either finish it with a linen communion veil, uh, and Alma might have seen this. This is very common in the Church of England. Uh, we do it here to some extent, but especially in the Church of England, they will dress the whole stack, and that's what we call this when it's all put together, the stack, with a white veil. Okay? Um, we tend not to do that so much. Uh, we tend to do it things a little bit more maybe in a, in a Roman style. Uh, and so we would instead uh, use a veil. Uh, just a, this is just called, that's called a commune veil, this is called a veil, I don't know why. Now what does that remind you of? Just as a piece of a fabric thing. Like a bib. Well, I wasn't really going there, but uh, it would be a very fancy bib, wouldn't it? Like a curtain. Well, yes, like a curtain. How about a casket? because that's what it is. And in fact, when we have a funeral and we have uh, ashes in, a, in an urn, we will use these uh, as a, a pall for the urn, right? Because in the Episcopal Church, as in the Roman Church, of course, uh, all of those things, uh, whether the urns or caskets, are traditionally covered through the course of the funeral mass. So that goes on top of there. And then this is called a burse, which is a Latinism for purse. Uh, now, traditionally, these have sides little, that, that open like, a, like an accordion, okay? Um, but they're really handier without the sides. And so most of them that are made today don't have sides. Uh, and in this, you will find all kinds of goodies, right? The altar guild will pack a, a corporal, that's that placemat. Uh, and they'll pack one or two uh, purificators. We always like to have an extra one or two of those in case we have a spill. Not that that ever happens no, around here. You know? I mean, you've never seen that, but uh, <laughs> it, does, it does happen. Now, I, I picked these, this set, which is a fancy-made uh, set that was purchased for the church at one point, as opposed to one of the lovely ones that um, our own Sharon has made us. Because of the of the style of these. You'll notice, yes, not only do the, the, does that look like a casket pall, but you'll notice this strip of, of elaborate fabric that runs down the middle of this and of this. That should remind you of a priest's stole. In, in the old Tridentine rite of the Mass, and in the English, in the old English Mass, the Sarum rite and so on, priest actually would take, would 
process into the church with this whole stack. And they would match his stole and his coat and his amice, all of his, his, um, his vestments would match. And the idea there then is to, and, and, is to reinforce the connection of these items with the priestly ministry uh, and the sacrifice on the altar with the priestly sacrifice of Christ on the cross. Because we believe that when Jesus offers himself on the cross, he is making the ultimate sacrifice of the priest. In fact, so much so 